A key figure in rock and roll history in our showbiz profile, George Harrison was recently at the induction ceremonies for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as the Beatles joined the list of superstars who have been so honored. On his own, Harrison's current album, Cloud Nine, is in the top ten and just went platinum. The album was co-produced by Jeff Lynne of the Electric Light Orchestra. Harrison talked about his life with the Beatles and his current success when he sat down with our producer, Jeff Panzer. basically a good record, good songs, and I think that comes about from the fact that uh, the, the production with Jeff Lynne really, you know, put something extra in there for me, and, uh, but I was ready for that, you see, after the years that I've not made an album, that uh, I was just ready to do a good album. The microscopes that magnified the tears in 1988, George Harrison can finally laugh at the past and find yeah. it humorous. Yeah, I'm much more relaxed about it now. And, uh, you know, everybody knows the history where we all um, split up and we had a lot of troubles with each other, but I know exactly what my contribution was. And uh, something like Fab, to do that Fab, song is, uh, you know, I'm, so, I'm much more at ease with it. I can just take it completely as a joke and as a trip down memory lane. I enjoyed my position in the band because I, wouldn't, I didn't really want to be one of them out there in the front. I like being this one who could stand back and see it from a different point of view. Well, I met John through Paul. And uh, the thing about it was at that time I was very little. I was just this little kid, you know. And although John was probably maybe two or three years older, for some reason he felt in his own mind that he was like this big old guy. And, uh, but I, I, I lasted, you see. I knew how to make it through there somehow. So come on back and see just what you mean to me. Although John and Paul did exceptionally well as songwriters, I mean, to a degree, it was very difficult to come in as a songwriter, but because they had formed a, this association, they decided to be Lennon McCartney, and that thing became, you know, bigger, I think, than they expected. For me to try and penetrate that with, uh, you know, the sort of sibling rivalry, it, you know, I didn't... Uh, get a lot of encouragement from, well, John gave me a lot more than maybe Paul did in those days. I've come out the other end of that now, and I just can see all the really good stuff that we did, the fun we had, and I know exactly about my contribution to the Beatles. I, I don't have to say much because I'm the quiet Beatle. <laughs> it's, uh, it is unfortunate Paul's not here because he was the one who had the speech in his pocket. Did you miss Paul? <laughs> No. <laughs> I think he missed it more than, uh, you know? I mean, it would have been great if he'd have been there. But, you know, he just chose not to be there, and he, he just missed it himself. He missed out on a great experience. Do you have any fears of going out in public since what happened to John in 1981? Well, I'm very careful when I get near loonies, you know? Like, the Hall of Fame was such a night, you know, it was very uh, stressful being in a room full of crazed people, even though they were all supposed to be uh, from the record business. But, but no, I just take everything as it comes, and I just take care not to, you know, not to get into weird situations. How do you feel about Michael Jackson owning the Beatles' music? I thought it was very strange because he was supposed to be Paul's friend. Personally, I only have about 10 or 12 songs that was in that catalog. I'd still like them back, Michael. They don't make him that much money. I want them to give to my boy in my will. He comes the sun, do, 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 do. He comes the sun, and I say it's all right. You mentioned
Vincent's your son. How did you introduce him to the Beatles? I didn't. He just, you know, like all babies growing up when they're about five or six, they all watch Yellow Submarine cartoon. He amazed me one day when, because he, he started playing the piano, and he said, "Hey, Dad, how does that bulldog go? Hey, bulldog!" And I thought, how could he ever hear this song, "Bulldog"? It's so obscure. And I realized it's it's the Yellow Submarine movie. It's rock and roll ageless. It looks like because. Uh, yeah, it looks like, you know, I mean, it's been going now uh, how many years, I don't know. They said it was not going to last, and it's lasted. And it, it's turned into, you know, the most popular music of all time. I think there's always space for other kind of music. But uh, this stuff obviously has lasting power. It's all right. Having returned home to England, Harrison had a few comments to make about the three surviving Beatles' chances of ever performing together and their relationship. He said that although the three get along better now, there is no plan to ever get together again, and that was because Paul McCartney is too moody. <laughs> 